There was frantic celebrating in Timbuktu as they realized the jihadists had finally gone. French Foreign Legion paratroopers who'd parachuted into the ancient town at dawn now patrol the streets. But the jihadists have left their mark, reducing tombs to rubble. This was the main tomb of the three saints. In the town's Ahmed Baba Institute, thousands of manuscripts which date back to the 12th century have been burned. The vaults which once used to house 25,000 historic documents charting life in this 11th century town have all disappeared. It's thought some may have been smuggled to safety. Others were taken by the jihadists who thought them un-Islamic. We destroyed everything. We destroyed the mosque. We destroyed the things. It's more than 300, 400 years old. They said because their religion doesn't accept that. For me, it doesn't make any sense. And we try to fight. Who to fight? And we are our own. We don't have guns to fight them. We don't have nothing. The French assault on the town began days ago with the aerial bombing of militant bases like this house, once owned by the Libyan leader Colonel Gaddafi, which was used as the jihadist headquarters, according to French intelligence. For the troops on the way into Timbuktu, this was what they'd been waiting for. For me, I'm so happy because uh, I, I will, uh, I will uh, in, the, in the practice my job in, in the terror. Uh, it's good because uh, I'm tired to stay over there. Yeah, you've been waiting for this moment. Yeah, yeah. The soldiers have made this journey from the capital in the south far quicker than anyone anticipated. We were with them as they moved a large number of troops, arms and military hardware up north. It's not been without its difficulties or dangers. The desert terrain has proved hugely challenging, with many of the military vehicles getting stuck in the sand and holding up progress whilst they were dragged out. We have a lot of problems with, um, with the mud here and uh, all our vehicles, such as this one, are stuck in, in, in the mud. When the Islamic militants were occasionally spotted ahead of the convoy, the soldiers called in air support. Mirage jets circling above, accompanied by several helicopters, were usually enough to deter attacks. By the time the convoy reached towns like Neofunke, the camps set up by the jihadists had been abandoned. The arrival of the French troops was greeted with delirious excitement by the residents, who lined the streets as they passed through to express their delight. When the military stopped en route, they were mobbed by grateful Malians. This is the sort of reaction the French military has been getting in all the villages and the towns we've been through. The people absolutely mobbing them, wanting to show their gratitude to the soldiers. This is one of the poorest countries in the world, and the French are being seen as liberators, freeing these people from the oppressive rule the jihadists had imposed on them. And as the soldiers handed their army rations out too, the Malians took them to their hearts. It's difficult uh, to see that because I'm a uh, Pansa Mafia. Well. You think of your daughter? Yeah. You think of your own children? Yes, yeah, it's, it's difficult. The task of crushing these Al Qaeda linked groups is by no means over, but in less than three weeks, the French led operation has resulted in the capturing of most of the key towns. The challenge now will be holding on to them. Alex Crawford, Sky News, with French troops in Timbuktu.